Лау, эхэхэй, иш, Good afternoon, everybody. It's Saturday, or whatever day you happen to be reading this. Okay, so it's been a little bit since I've recorded a demo lesson, and I kind of feel bad, but I also wanted to wait until I knew for sure what was going on with online schooling. Anyway, First thing we're going to talk about today is how to set up your work area for watercolor. Um, here, are the kind, here are the things that I use, and I realize not everybody is going to have all of these supplies. All right, so moving from right to left, I've got some masking tape, and I'll explain what that's used for in a little bit. Brushes in that handy dandy empty Lysol container, really good for storing brushes. Okay, paper plates. Uh, normally I would use a palette, but I have no idea where I stored mine at the moment. So paper plates make a really good palette. Got some water to activate the watercolor. Over here, we've got some, a container of soapy water to help clean the brushes. Paper towels, dry those brushes. Okay over here and this will get moved over towards the palette in a little bit i've got liquid watercolors now a lot of you will probably have the cake watercolors and those those will work just as fine excuse me yeah wow caffeine is catching up with me so the liquid watercolors are really cool because they got very strong pigment and very strong color after water is added to it and the beautiful thing about liquid watercolor is you don't need a whole lot in order to activate it. A little bit drop will go a long way. And given how a lot of art supply stores are closed at the moment, economizing or making sure your resources are going to last long is very, very, very important. So, okay. All right, see right here. Remember that? That is the cartooning sketch that we did. Okay. I took it out of my sketchbook, and then I did a couple things. First and foremost, see this board that I'm pointing to right here? This is very important. When you are using watercolors or doing any kind of painting on thinner paper, it's good to have a flat surface to attach it to. That's where... The masking tape comes into play, ladies and gentlemen. The masking tape does two things for us. The first thing is it gets it, it attaches it to the hard surface, the very solid surface. The second thing is it keeps the paper from curling. Now, a lot of you who have I've witnessed painting on copy paper and the like have noticed the paper starts to curl when it gets wet. Well, that's because of the fibers in it, fiber in the paper. When the moisture or the, the water starts to evaporate, it starts to tighten up and it starts to curl. So for a better time and a much nicer painting afterwards, taping it down will help make everything solid. Now, you also notice that I kind of left a section blank down here. That's very, very important. Uh, when you're doing a watercolor painting, and like this is, this very simple paint, very simple illustration. When you're doing a watercolor painting, having a little space to see how the colors mix on the paper is a very, very good idea. For instance, uh, you're not going to know, say, if I get a car, what have we got right here? I don't want to use that one. Let's say, if I were to use some emerald green, for instance, 
And this is Low Cornell. Pretty, pretty good. Really good brand. Autofocus, it would actually, you know, autofocus. Low Cornell. Really, really good brand. I digress. So, for instance, if I wanted to see how the color would interact with the paper, I would plop a little down onto my palette, hydrate it using a brush, and then mix it down here to see the desired effect that I want. And when we do the painting demonstration, or well, well, we, and by we, I mean me, when I do the painting demonstration in a moment, it will all become readily clear. Uh, and I'll talk about more about that when we get to the point. Excuse me, when we get to that point. Ah, oh, man, I miss teaching in a classroom. It's the interaction. It's really... <laughs> really keeps me from going crazy. So, I'm going to do another pass by. Brushes. Paint. Palettes. Tape we're done with. And we've got the water. And all of that. So, this is just a practice painting. If I were to do an actual watercolor painting, I would endeavor to have a much more interesting composition. And ladies and gentlemen, remember, composition is how an image is put together. It's like a puzzle piece. And for those of you who remember, there are generally three layers to a composition. One is the foreground, everything up front, closest to the audience, that being you. And then there's the midground. Mid, mid meeting middle. Those are ha farther away and more background images. Well, closer to the background. The background's furthest away from you, the audience. Uh, right here, we just have the, the sketch that we did last, or I did, pre had done previously. Nothing too special. Very, very simple. But this is just to help show you some watercolor painting techniques. Now, again, I do not expect all of you to have all of this. Uh, in fact, I've got I've got more professional air quotes professional stuff locked away that uh, I haven't quite found since I moved, but it's it's somewhere. All right, so. Just as a little bit of a uh, setup before my time runs out, we are going to do a wash first. When you do a wash, you paint just water that, has, that, that hasn't had any color or pigment added to it over it, and that will saturate the paper. Do not put too much water on the paper, otherwise it, you'll start poking through it when you start brushing. You just want a nice thin layer, and then you're going to start dabbing some paint down and that paint will bleed down onto the paper. All that will become very apparent as soon as the lesson starts. All right, I will be right back because my camera is running out of time. Many years later. And we're back. Okay, so everything's ready for the painting. I've got a little bit of watercolor on my palette. The colors I am using are ultramarine blue, violet, crimson, sap green, cobalt blue, vermilion, Lemon yellow, and because I already put it away, medium yellow. All right, so first thing first, we have to do a wash. So I'm going to take a brush, big old brush right here, wider bristles. FYI, please do not touch the bristles. I am going to harp on this again and again and again and again and again. Your skin has oil on them. Uh, skin has oil, especially in the fingers. The oil will mix with the brush and the bristles in the brush, and then that will damage the bristles, making them brittle. Just like you shouldn't touch your face during, during all that stuff that's going on right now, 
don't touch your bristles. Okay, so uh, I've got my water right here. I'm dipping my bristles into the container of water. Now, I'm going to paint a layer of water on top of my pencils, and it's okay if some of it is wiped apart. And you can see that it is starting to bow up a little because the paper is wet. So I'm going to now take one of my smaller brushes, I'm going to dip it in the water. I'm going to add, well, let's add some of my crimson and see how this is coming down like this. The water on the paper helps it blend and downwards. Like so. And if I stop talking, it's because I'm focusing on the colors. All right. Clean brush. As you can hear, Sawyer is ever present and making himself known. Now I'm going to go to, let's use a little bit of what I am assuming is my, one of my blues. All right, now I'm using just the primary colors. Just using primary colors. Switch it up a little bit. Okay, and you can see that it is blending and moving across. We're gonna use we're gonna use my medium yellow now. I always after using my brush, I'm re-wetting it. Okay. Once you're happy with the colors that you have, and I'm almost there, I think I want to use just a little bit of my violet. Okay. All right. So now I've got a lot of paint on my paper. I need to let it dry for a little bit. So I will be right back. 